There's really been one thing that made me, a view dev, jealous of React. Framer Motion is one of the most elegant animation libraries on the web, fitting right into that component mental model, and I saw so many React websites building insane things. Recently, though, Framer Motion became independent and released a framework agnostic tool, opening the doors for all front end devs to write JavaScript code to make animations. But now there's official view support in Motion with full feature parity. So let's learn about it. But first, why would we use Motion when there's already ways to animate things in Vue? There are CSS animations, which are quick to add, but can get complex once things get dynamic or state driven. There's Vue's transition component, which is great for handling conditionally rendered elements, but you have to bring your own styles, but it's not really designed to handle things like hover interactions or gestures. One of my favorite tools for Vue animations is Auto Animate. It's kind of magic, you just add one directive and all of your animations just happen, but it's intentionally not very customizable. And then for when you need to go crazy with animations, there's GSAP. It's extremely extremely powerful, but not really view minded. When I've used it, it sometimes feels like animations on top of your view app rather than as part of your view app, which for some people is completely fine, but I prefer motion syntax as a way to build those advanced animation sequences. So to get started with motion's new view integration, we just have to install the motion V package. And then let's say we want to add animations to this button. And the first thing we have to do is make this a motion component. And we can do that just by changing button to motion.button. And this motion dot syntax exists for every HTML and SVG element. And it's basically just a view component that's ready for those advanced animations. And now that this is a motion component, there's special props that we can use to animate it. We can use while hover and while press and pass in different styles. And then if we interact with our button, those animations are automatically applied. And we can also change how the scale value transitions. With this transition prop, we can set a duration, a delay, and even change the easing function used between the values. So now that we've seen a simple example and how easy it is to set up, let's take a look at some of the more advanced use cases. One of the things that I see devs like a lot is how easy it is to make scroll-based animations. For example, if you want to animate something when it enters the viewport, there's a built-in prop for that. So if you want to animate this div as soon as it becomes visible, we just have to set its initial state, its while in view state, and then we can use in view options to say that we only want this to run once. And just like that, we have a clean way to add scroll-based interactions. But the thing that made me really want to try motion were layout animations. And the example in the docs for this is pretty sick. It even lets you animate things like justify content. So if you had the switch component where you wanted to animate this circle, we just have to use motion div, add a layout prop, and now depending on whether it's flex start or flex end, it will animate between those two layouts. But the use case that I've really been liking this for is something like animated tabs. Let's say we have these three different tabs and we want to animate a background when the tab changes. The way I would do this in the past is have some absolutely positioned background. And when we click on a tab, use its X value and its width to animate our background to a new position. But with motion, this gets simpler. For each of our tabs, we can just conditionally render a background and then give it a consistent layout ID. And using this layout ID, motion will automatically match these two elements and animate between them. I feel like this could be an hour long video if I dive into every motion feature. So I'm going to speed run through this and leave a comment if you want a longer video. Variants let you define your animation states as a variable, which means you can reuse them across multiple elements. And you can also use variants to orchestrate animations between parent and children, like staggering child animations to create a nice effect, or waiting until all child animations have finished before animating a parent. Animate Presence is a motion component that for me so far just feels like Vue's transition component, where you can animate children that are controlled by a VF. The difference here is that the styles are applied to the internal component as opposed to being applied on Animate Presence like it would be with Vue's transition element. There's a lot of low level composables like Use Motion Value, Use Transform, and Use Spring that let you make some wild animations. For example, I saw a code pen of someone using use transform to morph between different SVG paths. And you can also make motion components draggable just by adding a drag prop. So with that one line, we can click and drag it around. There's options to control its physics. We can confine it within a certain area. And I'm sure one of you is gonna build some crazy UI that's way cooler than what I can do. But for me, Motion is a tool that's flexible enough to build highly custom animations, but still has a very Vue-like developer experience. If you want to learn more, the full release article and docs are linked below. I want to dive into this more, so let me know if you're trying to see another video about it. And honestly, it's just really cool to see tools like this getting first-party view support. So shout out to the Motion team for bringing this to view. Hit the like button if you made it this far, and I'll see you in the next video.